Hello, I'm Glenn Hall. This is September 10th, 2019. And this is part eight of the mystery of the beast. Today's video is called The Head of the Beast. And I will be discussing the second parable from the book of Daniel that I intend to bring forth in this series. We're going to start though with some scripture from the book of Revelation. Chapter 12. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains in the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. I'm not going to discuss the first sign today. I'm not going to talk about the woman. I'm going to speak about the dragon. So focus on verse 3, Revelation 12, 3. Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. We learned in earlier videos that this dragon is, in fact, Satan, the serpent from of old. And that's even mentioned in this particular chapter of Revelation. So the dragon is Satan, and that's something we need to understand. And now we're going to go to chapter 13 of Revelation. Chapter 13 of Revelation is generally the chapter of the Bible that people would think about when they think about the beast that appears in the Bible. Chapter 13, verse 1. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. Let's go back and look at chapter 12 again, verse 3. The second sign was the great red dragon. It has seven heads, ten horns, and on his heads, seven diadems. Seven heads, ten horns. Now we go to the first beast, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. That's exactly how the dragon looked. Seven heads and ten horns. It mentions heads first in Revelation chapter 12 and 13. It mentions the horns first, but they both have seven heads and ten horns. The only difference is that in Revelation 13, the beast is shown with ten diadems on its horns. So rather than the diadems being on the heads, as it was with the dragon, the beast is shown with diadems on its horns. But they both have seven heads, and they both have ten horns. So... <clears throat> The reason I wanted to start here was to show you the similar, similarity between the dragon and the beast. Now, it's only natural, isn't it, when you consider the previous videos. I've shown that mankind was sold to Satan for his sin of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that one of the curses upon Satan was that Satan would eat dust. That is, he would eat men. In consequence of man's sin, man lost his immortality. His spirit died on that first day, on that day that he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And... Rather than mankind having dominion over the earth, 
Satan was given dominion over the earth. And I've taken you to several scriptures that show that even Jesus affirmed that Satan, in fact, was the ruler of this world. So, it makes sense, doesn't it, that the beast would look like Satan. That is, mankind would look like Satan. Now, that's where we are today. Most of mankind, in their heart, in their actions, in their deeds, emulate Satan. When Jesus confronted the Pharisees, he said, you do what your father does. Your father was a liar from the beginning. And he told them that their father was Satan. Of course, they took great offense at that. And I would think that probably a lot of people who hear this video will take offense. My father is not Satan. The fact of the matter is, most people are evil. Most people indulge in evil things. Every inclination of their heart is evil. But the amazing thing is, people are beginning to wake up. People are beginning to realize that, in fact, the ones that they've hung out with, the ones that they have respected, the ones that they always idolized are evil, evil people. In fact, they're finding out that these evil people that they idolized, the politicians, the actors, the great singers, so-called great, they're finding out that these people worship, actually worship Satan. You see, the worship of Satan has always been kept hidden. And that's because deep in our hearts, we do not like the things of Satan. We do not like the murders of Satan. We don't like to be lied to, even though many of us, many, many people lie and they become rich because they lie or they get girlfriends or boyfriends because they lie. So it makes sense when you understand the things that I've taught in the previous seven videos that this beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse one, looks exactly, exactly like the dragon. Mankind looks exactly like Satan. And that's because mankind has been following and obeying Satan for 6,000 years. Now, most people, when they think of the beast that appears here in Revelation chapter 13, When they think of the beast, they're not really discerning that the head of the beast is different from the body of the beast. If you've been a Christian <clears throat> for any time at all, you understand that Christians were called the body of Christ, and that Christ is called our head. That's because Christians take their orders from Christ. We are supposed to obey Christ. Just as my body is supposed to obey my head, we who are in the body of Christ, we who are believers in Christ, are supposed to obey our head, Jesus, and walk in his way. 
Now, it is true that now, at the end time, most Christians don't do that. Most Christians do not obey Christ. Most Christians think they have grace to sin. Many Christians don't even think sin exists anymore. But I'm telling you, it does exist, and you don't have grace to sin. If you do sin, you have someone to intercede for you so that your sin is forgiven, and that one is Jesus. <clears throat> but you do not have grace to go out and sin. You don't have grace to continue in the debauchery that you are currently in, whatever it is. So, we need to make a distinction between the head of the beast and the beast itself. Now, in the book of Revelation, you clearly have a distinction between the dragon and the beast. Now we're going to go to the book of Daniel, which is very much a companion book to the book of Revelation. It adds a lot of insight to the book of Revelation. We're going to go to the book of Daniel chapter 2, and now we're going to see what the head of the beast looks like. So turn to Daniel chapter 2. Well, before I go to Daniel 2, I did want to bring one other thought to you. In <clears throat> chapter 13 of Revelation, verse 1, And I saw a beast rising out of the sea. What is the sea? Let's look at a few verses. Psalm 65, starting with verse 5. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. The one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. <clears throat> Two things I want you to see here. In this scripture, the writer of Psalm, the Psalm, which happens to be David, equates the roaring of the seas and the roaring of their waves with the tumult of the peoples. Verse 7 says that. <clears throat> Verse 6 says that God established by his strength the mountains. I'm just going to tell you the mountains in scripture are governments. Now let's go to just a few other quick verses. Isaiah 17:12. <clears throat> Ah, the thunder of many peoples, they thunder like the thundering of the sea. Ah, the roar of nations, they roar like the roaring of mighty waters. Do you see how Isaiah does this? The thunder of peoples is like the thunder of the sea. The roar of nations is like the roar of the mighty waters, equating people with the sea. Jeremiah 6.23 They lay hold on bow and javelin, they are cruel and have no mercy. The sound of them is like the roaring sea. They ride on horses set in array as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Zion. So, people who are going to war sound like the roaring sea. Jeremiah 50, verse 42. They lay hold of bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. They, the sound of them is like the roaring of the sea. They ride on horses arrayed as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. <clears throat> Again, warriors, the sound of them equated with the roaring of the sea. So the warriors themselves are, equi are equated with the sea. And then Jesus prophesying in Luke 21, verse 25, concerning these days, he says, 
And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. Are not the nations in distress today? For all the years of my life, this country has been at war. The Korean War had just ended when I was born. Soon we were at war in Vietnam. Then we had the, well, oil crisis and crisis in the Middle East in the late 60s and the 70s. Then George, well, then you had wars over in the Middle East between Iran and Iraq all through the 80s. And then H.W. Bush took us into war in Iraq and destroyed that nation, almost destroyed it. We did that about 10 years later with his son. We created the 911 hoax and the havoc from that and then went off to Afghanistan and have been in Afghanistan now for 18 years. And over in Iraq for almost as long. And then while Obama was president, he and his people created a coup in the Ukraine tried to destroy Syria, destroyed other small nations, Libya, for example, killed Gaddafi, created chaos there. And then in the 90s, let's not forget Bill Clinton, who went to war in Sarajevo and destroyed a beautiful old city and killed countless people there. We have been constantly at war during my lifetime. Jesus said, and there will be signs and sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. The beast that rises from the sea is mankind. Mankind has arisen as a beast. We have come together as a beast. But we're always led by someone. There's always a leader. And that leader is the head. Revelation chapters 12 and 13 shows us the dragon with seven heads and shows us the beast with seven heads. When we go to the book of Daniel, chapter 2, we're going to see the first head that is actually described by the scripture. It's an astounding chapter, and I'm going to read the whole chapter. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His spirit was troubled, and his sleep left him. Second year, this is early in his reign. Then the king commanded that the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans are the Babylonians, be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king. <clears throat> and the king said to them, I had a dream and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans said of the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The word for me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn limb from limb, and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore show me the dream and its interpretation. 
They answered a second time and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time, because you see that the word for me is firm. If you do not make the dream known to me, there is but one sentence for you. You have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me until the times change. Therefore, tell the dream, and I shall know that you can show me its interpretation. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being one of the magicians, one of the men who are known to be able to interpret dreams and to be able to solve riddles, to be able to work in magic? Can you imagine a king telling you, you tell me my dream and interpret it? Has it ever been done? Who can do such a thing? Daniel 2.10 then says, The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There's not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand. For no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. The thing that the king asks is difficult, and no one can show it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. They're speaking a true word, aren't they? What the king has asked is beyond the power of anyone in the flesh. It's beyond the power of the flesh. It's beyond the power of the natural. And this is, this is what we must begin to expect. We who live in the flesh must begin to expect the power of the supernatural, the power of our God, to deal with the things that will be coming upon the earth. I believe that we will be fully provided for and that things will work out well for us. But we need to understand that the power is not in our flesh. It's not in our own abilities. It's not in our own great minds. It's not because we ourselves are something great. It's because our God is great. Verse 12, because of this, the king was angry and very furious and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out and the wise men were about to be killed and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. So <clears throat> the kings, army went out because Daniel and his companions, his three friends, were considered to be part of the wise men of the nation of Babylon. So his soldiers, Nebuchadnezzar's soldiers, went out to seek Daniel and his companions. They were going to kill them. Then Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He declared to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree of the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the matter known to Daniel. And Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation to the king. So Daniel acts with wisdom, asks for audience with the king, and asks for a little time so that he by the grace of God, can answer the king. Then Daniel went to his house and made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, and told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery. So they prayed to God about this. They prayed for an answer. so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Since I became aware that God had specially anointed Donald Trump to become president 
of the United States. And since I became aware that he was embarking upon a plan to destroy the deep state, I began to pray for understanding. I understood that if this was true, if Donald Trump had in fact been selected by God, And if Donald Trump really was going to attack and destroy the deep state, then that should actually be written in scripture. So I began to look for it. And I began to pray concerning Donald Trump's role prophetically in the plan of God. Similarly, Daniel and his three friends were appointed by God to be his emissaries to that kingdom at that time. And so, Daniel and his friends prayed for mercy from the Lord so that they might not be destroyed, along with the other wise men. Verse 19, Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. So in other words, if you are wise in the things of God, it's because God gave you wisdom. Don't be proud and think that you've accomplished something that no man can accomplish because wisdom comes from God. And so if we are wise, it's by the grace of God that he gave us wisdom. And if we have understanding about the things of God, it's because God gave us knowledge concerning those things. He hides his knowledge from the proud. He hides his wisdom from the proud and the lofty. Thus, the Bible is a closed book. You cannot, <clears throat> excuse me, you cannot be a proud, evil person and understand the mysteries of God. You cannot know them. They will not be revealed to you. <clears throat> he reveals deep, and hidden things. He knows what is in darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise, for you have given me wisdom and might, and have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. So Daniel prayed, his friends prayed, God answered, and then Daniel thanked the Lord for the answer. Therefore, Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and thus said to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. David, I mean, Daniel actually, he could have allowed the wise men to be destroyed and killed. Then. But he didn't. He actually intercedes for the wise men. These are men who do not honor, <clears throat> do not extol the Most High God, the, the true God, the one that Daniel loves and serves. But Daniel did not seek their death. 
he interceded for them and said, do not destroy them because I have the answer and therefore I can fulfill what the king requests and therefore the king does not need to order that all of the wise men be destroyed. So now Daniel is about ready to go into see Nebuchadnezzar and reveal to him both his dream, the actual dream that he had, and the interpretation of that dream. An impossible task for mere men. But God, the Most High, had spoken to Daniel and Daniel knew it. Daniel knew that God had spoken to him and Daniel knew that he had the answer. I'm going to end this video here because the next part of this chapter I think will take about another 30 minutes and I'd like to keep these around 30 minutes. So this will continue with Daniel chapter 2 in the next video.